Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Most of you have been eagerly following the progress of AGT103-T in this channel. And I've also seen the recent uh, live event from AGT to provide update on Darwin as well as launch of AdImmune. Today I'm delighted to invite an important guest and friend of the channel, Jeff Galvin. Hi Jeff, welcome. Uh, uh, it's very nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, can you just give us uh, more insight onto what you um, spoke about in the live stream for our audience, especially on the extra results that you got after phase one of uh, AGT 103-T clinical trials? Sure. I know we're tight for time today, so I'll say it quickly. But, you know, the, the big news at our announcement uh, was threefold. One was that we had a very successful phase one. Really, the data almost couldn't have been better. So we got 100% safety, zero serious adverse events in the repair clinical trial phase one protocol, right? And then we did blood markers of efficacy that showed that the cells get in there and behave like we expect them to behave in the bloodstream. So they engraft, persist, don't get infected, and they keep fighting HIV. So that's a one-two punch where you get safety and you know efficacy signal. Now, uh, we rolled from there into an IRB-approved study uh, where we withdrew people from their antiretrovirals. And um, because even though their cell count uh, of the specific HIV-fighting cells that were protected against HIV, uh, it would naturally go lower because they were still on their antiretrovirals, so the cells are unstimulated. So there was a small quantity left over after we had measured these people for sometimes up to a year and a half. Right. So there was a, a decline in the number of cells. But when we took them off their antiretrovirals, we got really exciting immunological data saying that the immune system's reacting properly to HIV instead of becoming uh, devastated by it. There was lots of signs that the T cells are reacting the way they're supposed to instead of what they typically do when you take somebody off their antiretrovirals. So instead of the T cell counts going down, you know, the CD4 is going down and CD8 staying stable. We were seeing uh, CD4 counts staying stable and CD8 counts going up. That is an indication that the body is mounting an effective immune response against the virus. And we actually then took people off a second time from their antiretrovirals and got even better data. And it turns out the first exposure to the virus was like a vaccine, stimulated the cells, activated them, uh, got them all prepped in, in, into their effector state. And when we took them off a second time, we got even better data. All this stuff will be published in an article. We hope that we'll complete the article sometime this summer and maybe in the third or fourth quarter, you should see an article out where you can just read all of the details of this. But it was really encouraging. And so that was the first two parts of the announcement. The, the third one was the data is so good. We're spinning out at immune to be our HIV only company. We're taking everything that we've developed for HIV cure, we're putting it into a separate company. We're going out and making a big raise uh, to power this, to put rocket fuel behind that. And, and then to focus the entire company on HIV only to maximize the probability of success. And I think a lot of people that are listening to this, you know, maybe there are people that are interested in corporate development, but I think a lot of them are also interested in They'd like to see an HIV cure. Yes. And I think this is our best way to, you know, uh, drive towards that goal uh, as efficiently and with the maximum chances of That's success possible. possible. And uh, Jeff, uh, can you just give our audience um, a rough idea of what is the time frame we are looking for for phase two and probably uh, going further into various parts of the market? Sure, sure. So, um so we think that the, the the data that we just submitted to the FDA for the phase one, we think it justifies a phase two. We've made very small adjustments to the treatment protocol. The main thing being that instead of waiting a year and a half to take people off antiretrovirals, we want to do it right away while the number of these cells is at its maximum in the body. Yes. I think that will have a, a big difference in terms of the overall potency of the drug, right? To have more of the, the super cells in the body ready to fight HIV as it comes out of the viral reservoir. So that's the biggest change in the protocol. And so we don't think that's a heavy lift, uh, you know, for the FDA to understand it and discuss any of the safety implications and for us to put things in place that make sure that the patients are protected under all, you know, things that could be anticipated. So that's the plan. And we, we think that there's some possibility of, of getting 
you know, like a reasonable possibility. It's our aspiration to get an approval to uh, for the phase two protocol this year and to start it early next year, which would mean a year after that, we'd start to get some data. So I think that, you know, that's sort of the, probably the schedule that people want to know. And some data wouldn't be, you know, the, the end of the phase two study, but it would give us an, a sense of where the efficacy level is going to land. And if it's high enough, what we would do is we would take that bat data back to the FDA even mid study and see if we can right. go ahead and and modify the protocol into a pivotal study uh, with some new endpoints. The idea is to get this to the people as quickly as possible, and of course that's also good for the investors and you know everybody, all the stakeholders in in this project. That sounds great, uh, Jeff. And also in terms of um, the two companies, let's going on to the commercial side. The two companies, are there going to be any interlinkages with them? What is your vision of how they will operate with each other? If you could just give us some ideas. Sure. The idea is for them to become completely separate companies, all co separate staff, facilities, resources, everything. When they initially split, we're going to go ahead and send everything that the HIV company needs to develop an HIV cure and to protect that cure so that it can you know, profit uh, you know, the shareholders of that company can profit from it. Um, and, um, you know, total freedom to operate within the HIV space. Um, so, uh, but once all that split happens and the IPs separated out and there'll be some cross licensing, uh, then it's an arm's length relationship. Right. Maybe one day they will want to license something else out of our portfolio. Who knows? but they'll have no better access to it than any other company that might be seeking a collaboration with us. Uh, we'll just look at their ability to do it, right? And um, and that's how we'll choose partners and they'll be one of the list of folks that we look at from the AGT side. So AGT will stay private um, and Adimmune, we're, we're hoping to head towards the public market with that because we think it's ready for the public market, but we have no no specific plans to announce, uh, just a, a desire uh, to eventually make that a uh, public company. So thanks, Jeff. We had a limited time, so I had squeezed in the uh, health-related uh, aspects as well as the co corporate aspects. Now that we have covered those two bases, I want to come back to one of the questions of the audiences. Uh, where will AGT be available once it is approved? Are you planning worldwide or just United States? No, absolutely worldwide now. It's all about economics, right? Um, the first world countries can afford this today because they're spending more on HIV than it would cost to cure those people. So, you know, it's not hard to convince the United States healthcare system to save money, right? But if you took that same, you know, gene and cell therapy, it may not be affordable in every market from day one. But what I can say is that gene and cell therapy has a technology curve associated with it that is reminiscent of my days in computers. Nobody in, you know, non-first world nations or even in first world nations ever believed they'd have a computer, the power of a the biggest mainframe in their house, in their kitchen, in a little box or in their pocket, yes. or that those things would make it to Africa, sub-Saharan Africa. But it happened. Because that's what technology does. It gets better every year and cheaper every year. And in that environment, and it, under the competitive pressures also, right? Because gene and cell therapy, it has multiple ways to solve the same problem. So, you know, just because we come up with the first HIV cure doesn't mean that we'll be able to sit there and, you know, own that market forever <laughs> if we don't improve as right. a company and come out with better and better cures at cheaper and cheaper prices. Well, that'll be true for the whole industry. And so I think that, you know, we will, our intent is to go globally. We'll go into every market where, you know, it, we can uh, do it without losing money, right? Uh, and then, you know, eventually we'll go into markets where we don't make any money because we're never going to make money there. But, you know, we might be able to license partners inside that country that can somehow do it, right. uh, you know, if we're, we're willing to forego our, our you know, license uh, fees or whatever. You know, even that's not off the table. You've seen that occasionally. Yes. And even current drug companies, global drug companies sometimes do that. That's good. I think it's a good, I think the, you know, people, wherever you are on earth, there's, there's a reason to have a little bit of hope for a brighter future. Yes. 
further away, the further away you are from the epicenter where this is going on, which is the United States. Uh, and then it's further away based on e economics, because it's much easier to go to a country that has the infrastructure and, you know, sort of the economic wherewithal to, you know, afford something for this. But, you know, it's going to get there just like, you know, if you if you've seen cell phones in your village, you'll see gene and cell therapy eventually, and it'll probably be much faster than you saw cell phones. And Jeff, uh, thanks for uh, explaining all this uh, and taking time off your important schedule. There is one last question I'd like to ask, which uh, was from one of the uh, viewers. Uh, they were asking about whether you need a CRISPR license or something. Can you just uh, speak a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, we don't currently use CRISPR in any of our developments. Um, and that's nothing against CRISPR. It's just not the right transportation, you know, sort of editing capability for what it is that we want to do. Um, so, but CRISPRs will get more and more reliable and, um, and they will become more and more useful. And eventually they will intersect projects that we want to do. And, and we think of ourselves as being sort of editing technology agnostic. So all of those things to us are the delivery layer of the software for yeah. yourselves, right? But what you write into those is what's important. So right. we focus on the tools level, which are components that you can reuse in any viral vector or in CRISPR or whatever. And then, you know, providing those tools for application developers who hopefully will cure 10,000 diseases, uh, you know, over the coming decades uh, more efficiently because right. we've developed reliable components that they can mix and match to form a foundation for those applications, much like an iPhone, right? You know, I told you that the last time we got together, probably that. Yes. You know, Component wise. Yeah. yeah. That is the, um, you know, the, the dream of AGT is to, um, you know, just enable the development market for solutions in gene and cell therapy right. in a way where, you know, we can create tons of competition and tons of entrants that can use our platform um, and to bring out solutions that, you know, maybe we hadn't even thought of. Right. Yeah. yeah. You had mentioned that in your first interview, like Microsoft object objects, putting together and building into new applications. So yeah. this is uh, amazing. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for uh, giving us an insight into AGT, your plans going forward and how everything would work out and also giving hope to many of our viewers who are actually suffering from HIV. Uh, that the cure is on the way, it's going to go worldwide. And also you have a soft spot to make sure that you will do whatever you can from your perspective to make sure that it reaches far and wide. Of course, all these things will take time. And um, uh, as That's time goes by, yeah. The, the news has been great. And yes. I think everybody has cause for hope, but you know, it's still going to take some time yes. to get there. And you heard the, you know, so the approximate schedule of the phase two, and there's still more things to do on the end of that. And then we need to start distributing globally or doing clinical trials in more markets. So it's going to take some time. But, you know, people have been living with this for a long time. It's worth uh, doing this. It's worth finding a cure. We're committed to it. And and I think over the, you know, uh, the foreseeable future, um, this is not just possible, but probable. And so if people are feeling hope and a little bit of faith that it's coming, fine. You know, it, we we can't uh, promises uh, promise a fix this year or early next year and availability. You know, over some specific time frame, but we can say, wow, the momentum is great, and we're feeling very optimistic, even confident that a solution is coming uh, that will help a lot of people. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks for taking your time. And it's been wonderful. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. And all the very best with AGT as well as Add Immune and the great mission that you're on. Well, thank you, Raj. Great seeing you again today. And let's get together again soon. Well, friends, that was my interview with uh, Jeff Galvin. And um, I must say that I'm really impressed with how Jeff has steered his company and also launched uh, Ad Immune now. And uh, with um, AGT 103-T being the sole focus of Ad Immune, uh, I feel convinced that uh, it's going to move much faster and uh, towards the goal. And also, um, Jeff has uh, expressed his desire to see AGT 103-T uh, go worldwide and reach all the people that really need it. Uh, so uh, here is hoping for the best. 
and on uh, on your behalf i have wished uh, jeff uh, the very best for him and his team and for adam yun and all his plans going forward and we hope to get uh, jeff galvin back uh, to the channel once again when there is any major developments at uh, agt so with that i would like to bring this video to an end i hope friends you like this video and if you did do not hesitate to press a like out there and if you are not yet subscribed please subscribe and help us grow this channel thanks and have a great day bye for now